What is up everybody, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen from all around the world, whether you're from Stowe Hills, you're All Stars, 456, or anywhere else, thank you for joining us for today's Sunday video. Now today, it's a bit of a tough one. It's a hard one because we're about to enter a time where the Israelites really struggle. Um, we're actually finally in the book of Judges, right? So we've gone through uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and now Judges. So we're on the seventh book of the Bible, um, and we're going to be talking about what this time period looked like for the people. Now, we've been talking about what a miracle is, and we've seen a lot of the miracles Jesus had, or God has done, right? Uh, parting the Jordan, um, giving the people the land, holding the sun still. He's done a lot of amazing things. But now we're going to take a look at um, what the payment for sin is. You see, sin for us um, is anything we do that that disobeys a command God has given. Anything we do um, to try and put ourselves above God, essentially, and think that we're better. And, and the payment for that, as Romans 3.23 tells us, is death, right? But, and there's a but, and this is the best one, the gift of God. Uh, some translations say the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So we have this debt, right? Uh, and because we sin, we're all sinners, we all mess up, we have to pay this debt, right? If I borrow $10 from a buddy, I have to pay him $10 back. Um, well, when we sin, we have to pay for that sin because it is a debt, it is costly. Um, and we can feel it and God feels it, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So think about it, you have a debt that you have to pay, but in order to pay it off, all you have to do is accept Jesus into your heart, trust him, and follow that command. So that's what we're talking about. What is the payment for sin? Um, and we've got a uh, good lesson for you guys today. Before that, I want to check you. I want you to check out this really cool video here. Don't you love dominoes? Those are so cool. Just the way people, like one action leads to a huge reaction, right? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. You see, sin has uh, an effect and it, and it spreads a lot faster than we sometimes think about. Sin uh, can affect us in ways that we aren't even really ready for um, until we see the consequences. And we're going to see that play out today in the people of Israel in the book of Judges. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open on to Judges chapter 2. Uh, and I'm going to be reading from the first verse um, and a few more after that. And so it says, the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochim and said to the Israelites, I brought you out of Egypt into this land that I swore to give your ancestors. And I said, I would never break my covenant with you. So God had made a covenant with the people of Israel, right? And he said, I will give you this promised land. But here's the thing about a covenant. A covenant is not just God making a promise, but also the people of Israel. The covenant has two sides, God and the people, and both have to uphold their side for this covenant to work. And so it says, for your part, you were not to make any covenants with the people living in this land. Instead, you were to destroy their altars, but you disobeyed my command. Why did you do this? So now I declare that you will no longer drive out the people living in your land, and they will be a thorn in your side, and their gods will be a constant temptation to you. So, God told the people, I will give you the promised land as long as you make sure to destroy the idols, remove the temptations, and take the land. And they did not. They started making allies with the people in there, uh, which seems fine, right? But what ended up happening is when they made allies with these people, they started worshiping their gods and acting like them instead of honoring the one true God. And so God said, because of this, well, there's going to be people in your promised land, and they will be a thorn in your side. Um, and even today in Israel, there's fights over who owns Israel. And you can see that God's promise is still coming true today. Um, and then we skip down to verse 10, and it says, After that generation died, so the generation that had first entered the promised land, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and serve the image of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt, and they went after other gods, worshiping the gods of the people around them, and they angered the Lord. So, the 
the people forgot who God was. You see, the first generation that entered the promised land probably didn't do a great job of teaching their children. They didn't put effort into teaching others about who God was, and in result of that, the, their children grew up and totally forgot who God was and did evil. They worshipped other gods and did terrible things. And it says... This made the Lord burn with anger against Israel, and so he handed them over to raiders who stole their possessions, turned them to their enemies all around, and they were no longer able to resist them. So what happens, guys? Well, the payment for sin? There's punishment. And the people of Israel sinned against God. They forgot who he was. They didn't follow his commands. Even though he's the one that gave them the land and all of the things that they had, they ignored that and did what they wanted to do. And so because of that, God uh, let the people, let their enemies start to win against them. And the Israelites were taken out and, and they began to, well, suffer. They begin to really uh, feel the weight and the effect of their sin, guys. Just like knocking over one domino, the first generation didn't tell their children, and the next generation of children didn't follow the Lord. And so the next generation had to deal with the enemy as they attacked them. You see, one sin can lead to a great multitude of pain and suffering. But here's the coolest part, guys, um, is even though uh, God was upset with his people, even though they had sinned and turned against Against him, he sent what they called judges. Uh, judges were great people who led the people of Israel out of burdens. It says in verse 16 that the Lord raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their attacks, right? So God would raise up a judge, the judge would rescue the people of Israel, and ultimately the people of Israel would sin again, and they would suffer again. And God did this over and over and over for several, several uh, years as he tried to help the people of Israel. And we're going to see what happens after these judges, but right now uh, we're going to take some time to look at the judges in this book. But for today, guys, I want you to understand that sin is ugly. It's deceptive, it's sneaky, and it wants you to mess up. And it'll start small, right? The people of Israel, the first generation that entered, uh, probably thought that not teaching their kids about um, his word probably wouldn't be the worst, right? Maybe they wanted to uh, sit back and relax for the evening or not do anything. And that little small thing led to a whole generation forgetting who God was and all the suffering of their people after that. So the sins you face, maybe it's a little lie, right? Um, or just one unkind word, or just uh, cheating on one test could lead to a whole multitude of future sins um, and pain and, and heartache. And let me tell you from experience, guys, that if you let those sins take root in your life, they're going to be way harder to get out than if you get them early. So I challenge you, what things are you struggling with? Are, are you struggling with unkind words? Are you struggling to do the chores your parents have asked you to do? What is it that is um, holding you down? And what can you do to fight that? Talk with your parents. Talk to somebody you trust and figure out a game plan on conquering those sins so that you can love God more and trust Him more. If you guys want to watch the full uh, Bible video after this, you always can. You're welcome to. If not, I'm going to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. God had led the Israelites out of Egypt and he was with them as Joshua led them into the promised land of Canaan. There, the Israelites lived in family tribes, 12 tribes in all. And God made a covenant with them saying, I will keep my promises, but this is what you must agree to. Never make a covenant with the people living in this land. Tear down their altars to their false gods. The Israelites had agreed and they were supposed to take over the land, but that's not what happened. After Joshua and the older generation of Israelites died, the Israelite children grew up and did not remember God or everything he had done for them. They did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. The Israelites fell into this, this cycle of sin, and it went like this. First, the Israelites would disobey God and worship the false gods of the people living around them. They'd forget about the one true God. God would, would grow angry and he would, he would let an enemy king come in and take over the Israelites and the people would have to serve that king and they would suffer greatly. Then the Israelites would remember how good they had it when they loved and obeyed God. They would cry out to him, save us. God wanted the people to love and obey him. So he would raise up a leader from the Israelites to deliver them from their enemies and rule as a judge. 
the people would obey God as long as the judge was alive. But when the judges died, the Israelites would turn away from God and the cycle would begin again. Sin, oppression, repentance, rescue, obedience, and then all the way back to sin again. This is the story of the book of Judges. The judges saved the people from the consequences of their sin, but not the cause of it. God's plan was to one day send a true deliverer, Jesus, his own son, to be the king of his people. Jesus saves people from sin forever.